Good day everyone, Garage King here, and the three most common problems with the Jaguar S-Type heating control system is the heater valve, we have the climate control unit, and we can rebuild the climate control unit. Let's roll that intro and get to it. So take a look at this. This is the temperature in our center stack. Car's running, so it's 75F. That's the temperature in our center uh, stack. These are the center two vents. Now, if we pan down here, we can see it is hot outside. It's 29 centigrade. So 29 centigrade is 84 Fahrenheit. So pretty hot. So we have our AC and it is working. The, the air conditioning is working. But what I want to show you is if I take this out, put it into this vent, you can see just how hot it's going to get. So I'm going to speed up because uh, we don't want to take forever. And you can see how hot it's going to get. So it could be the three things that I mentioned earlier. This video is going to be dedicated to show you how to change the heater control valve. So basically what I was trying to get across the point, it's very, very hot. There's no way to shut it off. You can have your cool air coming from the center and you have your hot air coming from here, but you want it cold everywhere because it's a really hot day outside. Now, now I almost forgot, before you start your job, you obviously need a new part. So Jaguar wanted over 500 Canadian dollars for this new part. And I was able to find it for about a quarter of the price on Amazon. So here's what the part looks like. There's the part, and I'll throw a link in the description so you can save yourself some cash. So here's the part, but then what happened next is a little bit troubling. So I run over to the Jaguar dealership and I quickly learn that everything is overpriced. It's $120 for this stuff. So the dragon behind the counter tells me, well, hey, you're getting five liters instead of four. So I'm like, well, can't you give me a deal? That's still no way a deal. And he's like, nope, you can't have it. So the guy's like the kiss of death here. So I just took it because I wanted to use the Jaguar stuff. So we are panning underneath the hood of our fancy Jaguar. Here we go, and we can see we have a bad heater valve. That is the culprit right down there. I'm gonna throw up an arrow. You can actually see it's pretty discolored. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you right there. So that's the bad heat heater valve. So we're gonna replace that valve. Now, we can see it from the top, but if we pan back, there's actually not a lot of room. So I'm gonna lift the car, and then we're gonna get underneath the car. All right, so here's the underside of the vehicle. Now, if we look right up in here, there we go, T25. So we have three of them in the front. This vehicle is actually missing the one right there, probably because it hit a curb or something. So two T25s on the front, and then in the middle, right, where are we here? There we go, in the middle, we have two 10 mils. So those are in the middle section. And where's the hole for the other one? There we go, there's the other one. And then right at the very back, we have two 10 mil and we have a clip so 10 mil and a clip on each side there's that side and there is that side you can see right there i'll throw up an arrow so let's get to taking these things off and see how easy this valve can come out Now I want to make note of this part. If you're doing a lot of this type of work, it definitely pays to invest in a pair of specialty pliers because you can see here how easy it is when I squeeze them, it just pulls the clip right out. So it's a lot better than using a screwdriver because half the time you just break them with a screwdriver. So these pliers do come in handy. So now that we have the bottom piece off, I can take my camera and I can pan up here and you can see there is the valve. Okay, so I think the easiest strategy to get it off, there's an eight mil bolt on the top I can fill with my hand. Uh, and we should be able to actually get that from the top. Some guys may think they can fit their hands in here and you probably could, it wouldn't be an issue, but I think we can get it from the top and I'm gonna show you how. We're gonna make it nice and easy. The other thing is these two hoses, I'll throw up an arrow, there's one there and there's one right there. We're gonna actually disconnect them from right there and we'll take it out with the hoses. I think that's gonna make it easier than fighting with getting these hoses off down there. So once we disconnect the bolt on top, then what we can do is we should be able to be able to, we should be able to get onto the electrical connector. We can disconnect these two hoses. And then that third one, I don't know exactly where it's gonna go, but uh, anyway, you can see there, there it is. There's a third hose there. I'm not sure where that one goes, but we're gonna find out. So now let's go up top and disconnect that bolt. Okay, so we're back up top and the bolt, I'll try to see if I can get the camera in there. There we go, that's a bolt. I'm focusing down on it. You can see it, I'll throw up an arrow right there. 
and there's the piece. So through this area right here, we should be able to get a long extension down in there. So I made up this long extension piece, which is an eight mil socket. Uh, the bolt may drop, but we'll see. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fish it down right down in here. So here's where we're gonna fish it down. There we go, right down in there. You know, I feel like a doctor because I'm actually doing this as a doctor would do it and I'm looking through the camera. There we go, and it's actually on. So let's put our ratchet on and we are going to undo this bolt. Now we have this tool, so we're gonna use this long tool here just to see if we can use it to grab the bolt that's down there. There we go, and there's the bolt. Just like that, let's back up. And there we go, there's the bolt. We'll clean that up with a wire wheel and put some anti-seize uh, before we put it back in, because it's kind of rusted up. So now that we have this piece here, it's loose. If I go to grab it with my arm, you can see there it is. It's right there, so it's nice and loose. It has three hoses attached, so the two hoses that are attached, we're gonna uh, not fight with them down there, those two top hoses right there and right there. That's actually this hose, and it's this hose. This thing's hiding it. So I'm gonna undo these from the top, okay? And then there's another third hose underneath, and that is actually this hose, which I can undo from the top. That's really good. Now, the only thing is some people might say, well, did we really need to take off the bottom piece? And I think we did, because we're gonna get a bunch of coolant uh, splashing out. So it's probably best to, to do that anyway. So I'm glad we did take off the bottom. So before we undo any coolant connections, we just wanna undo the electrical connection. So if I reach down here, you can see there's the electrical connection right there. So I'm gonna get a pick, pull this little red thing up, and then I should just be able to uh, disconnect it. And there you go, you can see right there I've slid this, I guess, uh, piece up here. So this colored piece, this reddish colored piece, I've slid it up. And actually I'll film this part just so you don't damage your clip because once you pop this, uh, I'll just zoom in here. Once you pop this up, just like that, you can't just pull it off. You have to actually push on this centerpiece and then pop it up. And I'll show you what I mean. Normally I don't undo clips on uh, camera because it's just too hard, but I've uh, positioned everything so I can sort of show it. Now, if I just try to twist like this, I've pushed this part here, this part here, and then once you push this middle, then you go like this with the screwdriver and you can actually pull it right off. So it's important. So now we're just gonna undo these hoses. And once again, make sure your car is not hot. Make sure you've uh, relieved all pressure from the radiator system before you, uh, anytime you undo anything, cause you don't, definitely don't wanna get hot coolant burning yourself. So now I'm just gonna use the tool here. I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna zoom in and we're gonna undo these quick connects and pull them off. There we go, I think I got it. And there we go. So the first one is off. So that's great, and I have multiple drain catches below so I can catch all the fluid. Doesn't look like there's gonna be a whole lot of fluid coming out, but we haven't undone uh, the rest of them yet. And that's actually one of the reasons why it's good to have the bottom uh, taken off, because then with a drain catch, it's a lot easier. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna undo this one, if you can see, right underneath. There we go, right, right there. And there's the second one is off. Okay, so now that I have both of the coolant hoses off, they're loose, I should be actually, I should be able to just kind of pull this thing up. And there we go. We're just pulling it up. Here's the two hoses we left on. And then here's the last hose. So now what I'll do. So now we have the, the valve here. So we're just gonna take it off uh, right there and we'll make sure that we put it on uh, the new one the exact same way. So we have our hose, hemp, hose <laughs> clamp pliers here. Just gonna adjust them here. And there we go, that one's loose. Now we'll see if we can break this loose. Now we have to remember it comes this way. So when we have the new um, valve, we have to make sure we put it on the same way. 
and it is too tight here. It doesn't want to come, so I got a special tool for that. So now I just have one of these uh, pick tools here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pick it here at the bottom. We're underneath, and now once we're underneath, we can just loosen the hose. We can just pull our pick around like so, and this will loosen the hose up. Now that the hose is loosened up, we should just be able to just kind of twist and pull it off if I can with these gloves. There we go. And this one's off. Great. So now what we'll do is... All right, so we have, here's our old one. Here's our new one. And they look the same, they match up. So that's great. So we just have to take our hoses off. There we go, we got our first hose off. And actually, take a look at this. And that's uh, all the gunk uh, that's just building up uh, in there. So now we're just gonna put the new hose on the new valve and just make sure you get the orientation right. And I like to put the clamps back in the same place. So I'm not gonna bore you with putting the other hose on, you get the idea, just make sure you put them on the same way they came off. So let's get back under the car. So now we have the valve back on the car, just like, uh, just like this. And if you remember from earlier when we were taking it off, we just lay this down so these things go this way and then this just connects just like this. So that's how we want to connect it so it'll go back on the same way because if we put the hoses on the wrong way or on the wrong orientation, we're going to find we're going to have trouble putting the valve back in. So I'm just going to get a little bit of coolant here just to lubricate the hose just a little bit. And what that'll do is it'll just help it slide on nice and easy. So we're just going to take it like so and then we're just going to slide it on if we can get it on there we go so now that's back on so now what we got to do is get our hose clamp pliers and clamp that back on so we got our hose clamp pliers and everything is back on so now what we can do is just tuck this back in we're going to plug in the electrical connection uh do that one bolt up that goes through there and then we're going to fill it back up with coolant all right so let's tuck this back down in here we're just gonna tuck it all back down and then I'll reposition the camera and you can see how I'm placing it. All right, so I'm just panning in here and you can see there is our valve, sort of how it looks as best I can, best I can do it, guys. So we're just gonna take our valve there and we're gonna let it get back down here. There we go, I'm just tucking it back down. And there we can see it's actually back back down where it's supposed to be and here's our two clips we're going to clip those back to uh back to here our two coolant clips now just one thing to note that's very important you can see here i'll give you a little focus here there's a clip that's for the bottom hose of the valve so i'm going to crawl underneath right now and i'm going to put that bottom hose i'm going to clip it back into that clip and there you can see the hose is properly secured by the clamp so here's the rear hose right here so we're just going to clip this one on there we go if I can get it on there we go and I can't pull it off I can tell it's on and now we're going to do the front hose and it's a good idea once you think they're on to give them a good pull to make sure that in fact they are on because you can see here that's the lip I have to get over And there we go, I'm on. So I'm on. Okay, so now all the hoses are connected, so it's time to do the electrical. Thing is too, if you're a little bit unsure, what you can do is you can twist the hose like so, and then look underneath and there you go, you can see the steel right there, that piece of steel. I'll zoom in, and there you can see the hose connector is actually under the lip. So now I'm just gonna snap the electrical connector together. And there, now it's on. Now what I'm gonna do is slide this down there we go, just locking it. So now our electrical is on. Now I'm just showing you when you line it up, you actually have to go between. You can see the rust where it was on top. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go between. Right here, I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna put it between. There you go, and you can see I'm sliding it in. And there you go, it's lining up. Now we'll just go get our bolt. Now I've taken the bolt to the wire wheel there, 
and you can see the threads now some people go crazy and they go stripping these things and you know it's just too much uh, on the wire wheel now a lot of these factory bolts are really high quality they're zinc coated so you only want to take off enough just to clear off all the corrosion if it's really bad then i guess go a little bit more but this one you can see here it still had some of the zinc left on it it still looks pretty good it wasn't corroded there so i really didn't go too much in that area i just took off the corrosion there so that's what you want to do with the bolts and then we'll put some anti-seize on it before we install it and there you can see there's the the valve, we're just zooming in, and there's the bolt. I was able to just drop it in pretty much. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our extension, like how we did before, and we're gonna fish our extension down there and see, you can see here, this is what I got the extension with my hand. I'm just fishing it down here, and we're gonna get down and do that bolt up. There you can see the sockets on the bolt. And just turn the socket, hopefully it goes in. If not, I won't be able to film this because what I'm going to have to do is uh, grab the, the valve with my hand and move it around. But actually, it is going in, and you can see the bolt is almost bottomed. So that's awesome. We're going to zoom back out. There's our long extension, so I'm just going to put a ratchet on the end of it and just give it a little snug up. Now, we probably lost about uh, a liter, maybe a liter and a half of fluid when we are doing this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to check the quality of what's left just to see if I have to pre-mix the new stuff. There we go. So I can see it's kind of weak. Uh, it's not very strong. It's about halfway. I always like it a little bit more three-quarters way. So what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to pre-mix any of the Jaguar fluid. I'm just going to pour it in pure and this way it'll strengthen up what's left in there. Now, if you are wondering, the easiest way to get it on is to put those center bolts on those two uh, little nuts so it actually goes over a threaded, uh, uh, a threaded, sort of what looks like a bolt, and you just put the nuts on. So this way now, it's all sort of hanging. It's very easy to crawl underneath, and now we can just put the rest of our uh, screws in very, very easily. To do this job well i use that long uh, bunch of long uh, adapters as you saw there quarter drive adapters they are about 17 inches and that was to get to the uh, bolt that holds the control valve i used this to help me out with the hoses some screwdrivers to help me with the clip the electrical clip torx 25 for underneath special squishy clamp pliers for those clamps uh, a 10 mil socket just quarter inch this was a half inch fuel line disconnector tool. This is a special GM one, but you can get it aftermarket ones for cheaper. A quarter drive ratchet and some of these uh, fancy plastic uh, clip removing tools. Uh, those are to re remove those clips on the bottom, but you can do it with screwdrivers if you want. I just have the pliers. So that's all I use to, uh, to change this valve. So if you have any questions, uh, just send me a comment. I answer all my questions. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.